pleased to be here, and I'm sure you're pleased to be here too because the reputation of the school uh, is excellent. You're getting, I'm sure, a tremendous education, and I hope you appreciate uh, what you're being exposed to and the opportunities that you have here compared to others who have uh, far less. My daughter, she went to school, went to a very good school in the United States, and I would always say the same thing to her. Take advantage of this opportunity that you have because others would uh, won't be so fortunate. Uh, and so much is expected of you when you graduate from such a good school. I'm sure you all have much to contribute. I have a few questions I want to ask uh, first. How many here are associated with uh, MC? So and. Of those, how many do you expect that you will wind up in the United States, working in the United States, once you're through with all your education? I asked this question last week in Florence, that's why I was curious to ask you. How many of you are uh, of Italian, not heritage, you can live your family lives in Italy? Political appointees. Most of the people who are ambassadors, career people who 
uh, move out of the ranks. Let me give you an idea of what goes on in an embassy, in, uh, like the United States Embassy here in, in Italy, in Rome. And I'll talk about some of the issues we deal with as well. There are approximately 750 people who work in the United States uh, Embassy uh, here in Rome and in Italy. About two-thirds of those are locally employed staff, meaning they are uh, Italian citizenship and uh, work at the MC. The other third consists of foreign service people and other people from agencies of government. We have sections like uh, economics where we have experts that review all the economic issues. There's nothing more important between our two countries than commerce and business. Uh, we have politics. We need to know the state of political affairs here in Italy so when we interact with various people in government, we have an idea and we have a relationship with them as to uh, how to resolve issues of who, who to go to. We have a political military section. Military component is very large here in Italy for us in the partnership that we have with Italy. We have three large bases. We have 15,000 active military uh, personnel and 15,000 uh, dependents who are also here. Public affairs. Public affairs is important because it projects America's image here in the country about issues that are of importance to us that we want people to know about our values, what's important uh, to us. We have a consulate section that deals with all the Americans uh, in Italy uh, and those in Italy who want to go to America. And we have 30,000 American students each year studying in Italy, which is we have the highest number of any non-English speaking country. We have millions of Americans each year who vacation here. We believe it's one of the real great destination points for vacations. And we have a lot of expatriates who are living in Italy as well. So the consulate section handles all those. People. And we have a big management section where we have a lot of property. We also have, in addition to the foreign service people, um, people from the Department of Defense from Homeland Security, from Drug Enforcement, from the FBI, from the Department of Justice, from our Department of Commerce, and our Department of Agriculture. Now, they are all here in the embassy uh, focusing on their issues because we have interaction with all those areas of government with both Italian and American. The big issue that we have to deal with all every day is security, defense. Uh, Italy is so strategically located here, when you think of the troubled hotspots of the world, uh, Northern Africa right now, Libya, Syria, Iraq, uh, Lebanon, uh, Italy, no country is more strategically located and more important than uh, Italy. So with our Air Force and uh, base and our uh, Army base and our Navy base we have here, we work very closely with the Italians. We need to get cooperation. We need, for example, on Ebola right now. A lot of our American troops stationed here have uh, been going to Africa, three affected countries, and it's very complicated when you bring them back and they've been exposed. You have to have them in quarantine. It's a controversial issue, but one that uh, we have worked out very cooperatively well with the Italians. Um, we have um, also UK, uh, Ukraine, Russia, uh, these issues, which are very uh, front and center today. We need to get all the EU, European countries together with America in resisting this, uh, what can only be described as aggression. Now, the world is different today. If this happened as it did in World War II with Hitler, when it crossed territorial uh, boundaries and into other countries, we ended in a fighting war that lasted a long time. What Russia has done is violates all international norms, but our response is not a military one. Beyond those days, our response is an economic one. We have to make it clear to Mr. Putin and Russia that this will not be tolerated, and sanctions are a very important tool that we, you know, the world has used very effectively. And we have all the countries uh, all together, including Italy. So a good part of what we do is working together with Italy to make sure that we're all on the same page with respect to sanctions. Now, what else is important? 
we do. I think one of the most important things we do is uh, commerce and trade, uh, which is good for both countries who have United States uh, companies investing in Italy and Italian companies investing in the United States. Now, why is that important? That's important because if you build new plants, if you hire, if you uh, invest capital in a country, you build plants, you hire more people, you create more jobs, you create more opportunity, you know, more opportunity for for uh, the youth of the world, which is a big problem, as we know, uh, here in Italy. We spend a lot of time on our embassy trying to encourage Italian companies to look at America as a place to invest. We have a program called Select USA, where we do an analysis of companies that are here that we think could go to America and open up some of the plants there. Well, the Italian Made in Italy brand is a worldwide, highly respected brand in terms of quality. And there's more opportunity for Italian companies to export their product and actually make their product in other lands. So we take them, invite them to come to America. We're going to do it again in March. Come and meet with President Obama. Come and meet with the Secretary of State, John Kerry. Come uh, meet with the Secretary of Treasury, Jake. Uh, Jack Lou, come meet with the Secretary of Commerce, and Pritzker, and all the supporting group, and learn about the opportunities in America. Uh, the ease of doing business there is ranked about just about number one in terms of getting permits, getting things done swiftly. We have a judicial system, the arguments that we make that works extremely well. You can get prob problems resolved very promptly. We have a flexible employment system. So you're encouraged to hire people without being overly burdened with excess costs and inability to, um, to make, a, make adjustments if it hasn't worked out. We have energy costs in America now that are really one third of what they are uh, in Italy, uh, primarily because of the shale gas boom that you may, may have read about that is uniquely American phenomenon that now it's, it's really catching up around the world. Uh, energy is a big component of any manufacturing you can show that your costs are only one third, it's a hugely attractive uh, incentive to, to locate. We have states and municipalities uh, that are encouraging companies like Italian companies. Come to our state, we'll give you free land, we'll give you tax incentives, tax breaks if you locate here. And we have um, a huge market of people who spend money, 310 million people. So that's the argument as to why you should locate there. We spend a lot of time yeah, bringing them to the companies over, and they're very, very responsive. We're getting a great response. Now, the problem, the reverse side, getting American companies to invest in Italy is a much more difficult proposition, and we're working hard in that area as well. Italy, as you probably know, if you read about it, is, is plagued with a bureaucracy that's very, very substantial. It delays getting permits and approvals. Italy's judicial system is very, very slow. And it can take 18 years to get a problem resolved. Italy's employment program is very inflexible. Uh, so if you hire somebody, you're basically stuck with that person for, uh, for many, 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 many years, even if that person turns out to be unproductive. Italy's energy costs are very high. It's not Italy's fault because it doesn't have any natural source of energy uh, here. Um, Italy um, can fix all those problems, and that's what we're working with them um, to do. Prime Minister Renzi, uh, if you follow politics, his reform package is something that addresses each of those issues. These are all fixable problems. It won't be easy, but he's um, committed to do that. Our policy is that we support America's these reform measures. And we would support um, Mr. Renzi uh, because he's, he's advancing or any other prime minister that would be there. This is really, really critical for the future of Italy for it to begin growing again. Italy has not had any growth since the year 2000. That means uh, it's unique among all the EU countries. Italy um, has suffered through this period because of the stagnation of inability to, to Manufacture more and grow more people because of all those reasons that I mentioned. And as a consequence, Italy is suffering a brain drain of young people. People aren't optimistic. Like those hands I saw going up here 
uh, just uh, earlier, uh, people are thinking of going elsewhere because the high youth unemployment rate, 43 percent, is going to seem to offer much opportunity. But I would urge you to take a more careful look, those of you who are from Italy. Uh, I think things could change in five or six years. Italy has such a built-in uh, creative process of people, and it's been, it's been so successful in manufacturing in terms of quality of products. If it can fix these issues, I think it can unleash a period of growth of jobs and opportunity. But one issue, I think, though, is of uh, real importance, is uh, creating new businesses. That's why I asked that question of you before. Entrepreneurship, innovation, that's where the new jobs are going to come from. Uh, it's not going to just be old existing companies that are hiring more people. Let me give you some examples in America. This is what America does so well. This is what Italy could do well. And we're working at the embassy to try to figure out what we can do with partnerships to, to create a sense of entrepreneurship. Think of, uh, think of uh, this guy, young guy, left college, uh, first year of college, had an idea about uh, programming for computers, uh, you know, didn't have any money, really any real support. And today, that's Bill Gates, and he created uh, Microsoft. Think about a guy who had the audacity to think, someday, someday, everyone's going to have their own computer. This was about 1979, 1980. Uh, and he planned on building that personal computer. That was Steve Jobs and Apple. Uh, think about these two guys at Stanford who just had this idea of search engines just 15 years ago of what they could do to create a search engine would be the best of all possible search engines. What are your names and search engines? Well, that is Google. Think about it. that company that didn't exist 15 years ago. Uh, think about um, Jeff Bezos at Amazon. I want to be the biggest marketer in the world. I want to sell products through Amazon. Everybody needs an efficient way that makes it accessible for everybody. And think about uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. You know, almost a freshman in college, had an idea when I started with Facebook. Those companies together, uh, directly and indirectly, account for millions and millions of jobs in our career. Do you have counterparts like that in Italy now? I don't think so in terms of creating new jobs, new innovation. But you have the talent here to find that. And that's what the embassy is doing, working very closely and figuring out ways in which we can partner, bringing the best that America has to offer by creating regional centers. I think Prime Minister Renz is very interested in this job, this idea as well. So um, with any uh, help here, over the next three or four or five years, we'll be able to tap that talent that exists here. And, and the embassy wants to play a you know, significant as it can. So those are just some observations of what we've been doing and, and the structure of, uh, of the uh, embassy. It's a privilege for me to be the personal representative of President Obama. Uh, I do see him stay with us when he's here in March and uh, have an opportunity to talk about what's going on in Italy. And he loves Italy, by the way. He, he and Michelle both uh, love it. We also have an expo, and I'm hopeful of getting the first lady for sure coming here which opens. The Long Expo opens on May 1st for six months, and we are going to put a pavilion together on the subject matter, which is Feed the Planet, uh, Energy for Life. Um, we're going to go from 6 billion to 9 billion in 35 years in terms of the planet, and we have to figure out how to feed those people. We have to bring all the innovation that we can find uh, to create nutritious, wholesome, and sufficient food. Uh, for that. And that's a real challenge, but it's a real opportunity. I personally think your next 20 to 30 years, 40 years, you're going to be living in some very exciting times, and I'm very optimistic about what the future holds because of innovation, because of the developments that we're going to see in the energy field. We're going to see a whole different energy mix in 10 or 15 years, in 20, I believe, is my speculation. You're not going to see uh, hydrocarbons being used much uh, at all. You're going to see alternative energies. Technologies that we don't even aware of today that are going to come online and make a huge difference in productivity. You're going to see medical technologies that are breakthroughs that are going to deal with all the diseases that are out there that are all ready to you know, service. So your, your lifespan could well be on average 100 years old. That's not out of question as they begin to deal with all the diseases and how cancer, heart disease, and the like. So you have a bright future, and I wish I had those years ahead of me, but I've got some pretty good news so far.
with that option, and uh, that any questions. Who's going to have that first question? Question over here, please. Um, I guess this question comes in two parts. Um, it was said that you are the ambassador to Italy and to the city, city of San Marino. Are you also the ambassador to Vatican City or not? And what is your role as the ambassador of San Marino? Because I just think that's so cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, easy answer. I am not the ambassador to the Vatican. We have our own separate uh, United States ambassador to the Vatican. Uh, he's a very good friend uh, of ours. Uh, thank you for great job. San Marino is a very small country, uh, a landlocked country within Italy. Uh, has um, 32,000 people and I don't know how many square miles I've been there. I've presented my credentials. I've met with people from San Marino, um, government officials on various issues. It doesn't take a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> but I think actually San Marino is a very interesting place in terms of creating smart, you hear about smart cities. It's like a smart country because it's very uh, educated. People are very sophisticated. They have a 19% tax base compared to all the other European countries. They can really turn that place into a powerhouse. And I talk to them about ways in which they could do that. So I don't spend a lot of time, but I'm interested in it. I am. I am the best in the center. So, who receives the money from sanctions to Russia? And how much do you know to sanction Russia? So the question is, who receives the money from sanctions against countries like Russia? And what was the second part? And uh, how, do you, uh, how do you know how much to sanction Russia? And how do you know how much to sanction Russia? Well, maybe there's a perception of what sanctions uh, involve. Sanctions means we won't trade with it. It's not like if you pay us money, we'll disperse that money. It means uh, we are not going to allow Russia to have access to our whole international financing system, uh, banks, which is crucial and vital in order to be able to keep their economy going. It means that we won't allow our technology, American technology and European technology, to be used for deep water drilling in the Arctic world. So it's depriving them of what the West has to offer uh, because of their conduct. Instead of fighting that more terror, they say, if you're going to engage in that conduct, we are not going to uh, allow to do any trade with you. Now that, that has consequences in both ways. I think Italy, who does have a lot of business dealings with Russia, will pay a much more significant price in terms of cost to Italy than America, where which has much, much less. But the long-term consequence of not challenging that conduct with sanctions will be much, much worse if, if uh, Russia can think it can invade country after country and reclaim the Soviet Union that broke up. 20 years ago. Uh, that would be, uh, be very bad for the world in terms of instability and uh, potential conflict. Before you said that the Made in Italy mark was uh, very renowned in the world, so wouldn't bringing Italians to America um, decrease the value of that product or the label? Wouldn't it be more efficient to keep people in Italy and have them produce um, things in Italy? What do you mean if the American workers try to make the same product it won't taste good? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think what I mean is, is yes, you want to continue to produce uh, in Italy. It's not move plants from Italy to America. It's to say that your uh, established brand is so good, it's more efficient for you to use the same techniques and quality control and make those products in the United States as well, because the cost factor and quality factor is all, is all there instead of making them here and shipping it back. So it's not either or, it's an expanded opportunity by by locating that as well. And who wouldn't want a Ferrari dealership in a Ferrari manufacturer in the home center? Right? <laughs> Other questions? Did you ever face severe safety issues as an Italian investor? <laughs> well, no, I mean, not here in the but I will say this, that uh, part of what we have at the embassy and all embassies is an intelligence gathering uh, service. Uh, uh, that's crucial to find out what threats there are. And I can tell you we meet on a regular basis and when you have these foreign fighters and foreign fighters returning and you have people who are uh, clearly on, on a jihad out to kill whatever they can kill, there are threat levels that you never hear about them publicly and uh, you know Americans are targets could be targets, and they're the targets they have been targeting. So I, we get briefings on that, and uh, we have a lot of 
because it's, uh, it's a fast track to really good information and really good support. And so just as an aside, uh, thank you for uh, the support you provide to our school. Other questions? Not too long ago, Laos discovered that the Mekong River could produce enough energy for Laos and most of Southeast Asia. Do you think that Italy can probably find a natural resource that we can use to power Italy and sell to other countries? Uh, yeah, I think uh, there is. Enormous potential for that. Right now, Italy is importing about 30 to 40 percent fluctuates of its energy needs from outside. Well, from Russia, actually, and imports other uh, amounts from other countries. Uh, I just talked to the, uh, you know, the CEO of ENI Andy, who is a very large uh, Italian energy company here, and he told me that the clients in uh, Africa, but they have been doing exploratory work, one find in Mozambique alone that they have documented the, how expensive the gas is, the natural gas is, is enough to power Italy for all its energy needs for the next 40 years. It's one source, one country, it's huge field. Now, you get the infrastructure in place to build it out, and it has to be LNG, the block of the natural gas, you have to freeze it, ship it. <coughs> it takes some time there, but there are any resources out there uh, like that. that we, I think it's really crucial that we not rely on Russia, given the fact that Russia is using energy as a tool, as a weapon, interrupting free trade when it suits those political purposes, with the risk of countries like Ukraine not having sufficient energy to heat their homes in the winter. But I think they're going to be able to get through this year for sure, in terms of all the analysis of all the countries based on storage that they have in each of the countries. But it's a, it's a message that we want to plan in the future to be as independent as we can. America, surprisingly, has reached pretty much an independent energy situation that was not expected because of this shale gas boom. I'll just tell you one quick story about the shale gas boom. This is another example of entrepreneurship. This is one guy, one guy in Texas, uh, George Mitchell. This is he, he just you know, had all these wells that they built all over the United States. And he knew, like others knew, that there still was a lot of energy trapped down in those wells that was not recovered. So nobody thought there was any future to ex exploit those wells. So he kept at it for years and years and, and said, no, there's a way. This shell rock especially has within it all this gas that they can only figure out how to fracture it in a way that makes sense. This is going to be useful. I know it's crazy. It's not worth the effort, it's not worth the money, but he kept on with it for 17 years. He's the one who really, really established the composition of this fracking where you can, through drilling down way down 5,000 feet, and then horizontal, putting down liquids that force their way into this block that fractures it, creates all these cracks. So all the gas that's in there comes rushing out of the back. So these wells that were considered over storm spent now are producing enormous amounts. And the technology is getting better and better and better as they refine the technique so that uh, what we thought were wells that were totally gone and finished are producing enormous amounts of new wells that are being built. Not the same technology as you've been used around the world. Nothing, if he hadn't done that, he hadn't been so persistent in doing that. I don't think there was anybody else who could have done He's had an enormous uh, impact on availability of energy resources, on our balance of trade, on the geopolitical situation. One person did that. This is the idea of entrepreneurship and, and being able to get an idea and follow, follow through. I believe solar energy, wind energy, uh, biofuels, uh, uh, biomixes, uh, battery technology is going to be huge. You know, this guy who, uh, Moss, Elon Musk, 
Tesla car that is going to be a huge new battery plant in Nevada, not space. What's important about that is you can store energy. If you have solar energy, you, you, you can power your house during the day if it's under a roof, but in the evening if there's no sun, well, you can't. But you can capture that excess energy, put it in the battery, and then charge your car from the battery, and also uh, have it available for the uh, off hours. That's kind of, I mean, it's here now, but that battery technology gets to the point where it's really efficient. We're not going to need hydrocarbons. Everybody, and we won't need a grid system. You might be happy to that. It's very, very inefficient. There's going to be so many, there are going to be so many breakthroughs, I believe, in energy and technology in your life, in the next 20 years, that is going to be a totally different world. And exciting one, and opportunities in that, in terms of jobs, innovation, uh, it's going to be a huge, it is now, two here have built to invest on it, but to, but to create. Uh, new technologies that make the world a better place. Perfect. Well,